Hi foodies, how are you doing today? Today I'm making a really simple family dinner dish. It's one of those things that it's easy for a wheat night, shepherd's pie. And usually we use ground beef, but actually technically a shepherd's pie is to be made with lamb. So this time I'm using some ground lamb and I'm seasoning it overnight. I'm not adding the salt now because when you add the salt to the ground beef, it draws out that moisture. So I'm going to be adding that when I'm cooking it. Okay, so this is just the other spices overnight. And we're going to just rub that in and let it soak in till the next day. Okay, so we have our lamb ready for the next day, guys. So get your pan, really high heat with some oil, and then we're gonna try to brown the meat really fast. You want the pan to be over high heat because when that cold ground lamb hits the pan, it's gonna start to cool it down. So it's best to start with some high heat and then you can gradually turn it down to medium if you feel like it's too high. So what we're doing now is we're just going to try to break up the meat as fast as you can to separate the pieces as fast as you can in the pot. At this point now I'm going to sprinkle in the salt. So season it to taste and then just keep browning it in the pan. Now we want this to have some flavor so let's go in with some diced onions if you prefer sliced onions that's fine but i prefer the diced onions in there and some diced peppers as well and we're gonna go in with some other vegetables later on Now, to be honest, sometimes if I don't have tomato paste, I just use ketchup. You know what I mean? I just put a little bit of ketchup in there. But you actually could make a really delicious dish if you do it the traditional way, adding your tomato paste. And of course, I'm going in with some diced herbs. These are fresh, but I diced them uh, finely. All right, so let's turn up the flavor a little bit more. I'm gonna be going in with some scallion or green onion, whatever you wanna call it. It's just really flavorful. So 
we're adding that here and I'm going to go in with some beef broth if all you have is chicken or vegetable broth fine but beef broth works well with this if you're wondering why not just use water well think about broth it has a lot of flavors because you get it from the bone you get it from you know carrots celery onions things like those might be in the broth or the beef stock so that's why we like to add this to stews if we can because it adds even more flavor this is optional but it does add some flavor so some red wine just go in with your favorite red wine that you like to drink Of course, traditionally, scotch bonnet doesn't go in there, but I just want a little bit of that scotch bonnet flavor, so I'm going to simmer it in there. And then I'm adding some frozen mixed vegetable, of course. So we'll cover this and just allow it to simmer. Now just to thicken up that gravy, I'm going to be adding a slurry. This is cornstarch and water. Just mix equal parts cornstarch and water and stir that in. If you have no cornstarch at home, don't fear. Add flour instead. And then just stir that in and let it cook for a couple minutes just to cook out that starch. And you'll be good to go. now moving on to the potatoes guys so we're simply gonna be boiling the potatoes mashing them with some butter and some other ingredients okay so add your potato to the water and then allow it to come up to a boil so we leave that to boil and then we are gonna go on to our eggs so traditionally egg yolk is often added to the mixture to the um, potato mixture to give it color and flavor and creaminess so I'm just separating the yolk from the white here this is one of the ways you can do it so you just move the yolk back and forth from one half of the shell to the other and then allow the white to run down into that bowl that's one way another way is you could prick a hole in the top of the egg and then gently shake until all the white falls out and then the yolk would be left inside but um, I like this way Now, for most of us in the Caribbean, that dense white string that holds the yolk and the white together, we take it out because our parents and grandparents told us that it just makes the food have an eggy, raw aroma and taste. So we will always take that out. It's your choice, okay? You can leave it if you want to. And then we'll just whisk these together. Now, you know I'm all for using what you have at home. But if you have a ricer or a potato ricer, it's really good to use when you're doing mashed potatoes, guys. You just put the potatoes in there and then just press this and they come out in really tiny pieces. It's really effective for getting rid of those lumps. But if you don't have it, go ahead and just use your potato masher and your whisk, okay? So this is the dish that I'm going to be putting it in. So get your meat, 
and scoop that in there. And of course, there's no need to grease it, okay? Let's pour the meat in there. And then we're gonna top it off with the potatoes. So get the potatoes into your ricer and then you can just squeeze and I'll show you how it works if you've never seen it before or if you've never used one before. This is beautiful and creamy. The water that boiled the potatoes was already salted and that's great, but adding these make it even more flavorful. Some freshly ground pepper and we are going to go in with some nutmeg. Yes, a little nutmeg is really, really nice in mashed potatoes. And then we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. This is optional. And remember that Parmesan cheese or any of those hard cheeses like Pecorino, um, they have salt in them too so be careful all right so add a little and taste and then make sure you're good to go then we spoon on the potato all over the meat There are many ways to do this. You can just simply use a spoon to smooth this over. Some people use a piping bag with a, um, a nice star tip to make a star design with the potatoes, or you could use your spatula to smooth it out. Some people use a fork to make a design. There are many ways to do this, but just get it nicely smoothed on, and then you can you know, decide if you wanna keep it smooth or do what I did. simple design and then we're just going to put this in the oven so we want the potato to get some color on there and to firm up a little bit for texture and then everything is going to be nice and hot all right here we are out of the oven guys you can add some more fresh parsley if you want to and this is good to go you can let it sit for a little bit maybe a couple minutes or so and then scoop into it
I don't consider this a fancy family dinner. It's a really comforting and easy and, you know, really simple dish to make. It's absolutely tasty. So give this yummy dish a try, guys. Let me know if you liked it with the lamb or if you would stick to ground beef. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.